Today's episode of The Gred Torrent Show is going to be a little bit different than previous episodes. My guest today is Julian Tepper. I recently interviewed his father, Robert Tepper, on The Gred Torrent Show, and through that episode, learned a little bit of Julian's story. Julian Tepper is an author who specializes in fiction novels, but more than that, he's also a musician and wrote the hit song, Don't You Ever, that was covered by indie rock sensation Spoon. The song was originally written and performed by Julian's band, The Natural History, which featured his brother, Max Tepper, on lead vocals and guitar, while Julian played bass. After about a decade of seriously pursuing his music career, Julian left the band and began his pivot into writing novels, which he continues to do to this day. His first novel, Balls, was published in his early 30s and is a story of Henry, a 30-year-old piano player living in Manhattan with his younger and more musically talented girlfriend Paula. When the protagonist of the novel discovers he has testicular cancer, he develops an existential crisis. His second novel, Ark, is also set in Manhattan and follows three generations of the formerly wealthy, artistic, infighting Arkin family. His third novel, Between the Records, is also the story of a musical family and is loosely inspired by his own musical adventures and that of his father. Tepper's work is consistently self-autobiographical. He writes about what he knows, and while he never had testicular cancer, the characters in his novels are clearly heavily inspired by the people he knows and the journeys he has undertaken. As a fellow musician, I know that Tales from the Road can inspire countless books without the need to fictionalize the facts too greatly, and it's an incredible well of resources for great narratives. Julian feels the same way, and feels that the truth is interesting enough to write about, and thus he doesn't have as much desire or inclination to write something more fantastical. If what you know is already incredibly interesting, there's not necessarily a need to write something less personal. This interview was exciting for me because in many ways I view Julian as a kindred spirit. Our lives are parallel in that I am transitioning into novels and books from my music career at the same age he did, and because of this fact, I really wanted to talk with him and hear his story. I'm excited to share a portion of it with you today. Two, one, and we're live. Julian Tepper, uh, thank you for for joining me on the show. There's That's- um there's a lot of reasons why I wanna I wanted to connect with you because I, I had your dad on the show and uh, you know that was a really great interview. Um, and I know it's got to be so old when people are just like I found out about you through your dad. But your <laughs> your story is actually really interesting to me because I, I view as sort of a, a parallel to myself in a number of ways where I've been doing music in my 20s, pursuing mm-hmm. it really hard, and I've always had a passion for books and novels, and I've always had, you know, the writing bug, and I'm working on, you know, transitioning into writing as I'm, mm. uh, I'm, you know, I turned 30 in January, I'll be 31 uh, in January. And that, you know, <laughs> I looked at your history, that's pretty much like the same timeline. So I'm like, oh, man, kindred spirit. And so I just would love to hear your story. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, I, I did make a pretty sharp transition, at least as far as um, where I was putting my attention. It took a long time after I'm stopped playing music in a band with my brother. Um, I I started working hard on writing novels immediately, but it took me, I think, about six years to get published. So there was a there was definitely a period of, you know, it wasn't, uh, I had worked so hard on, on making music that there, um, yeah, all that energy had been directed towards making music mm-hmm. and then, and then putting it into writing. Then I, I guess I knew at that point how much you had to put into something to, to get it to, I guess, the levels that I was hoping to get to. Did you, um, did you experience like music burnout? Like what led you to that transition? What made you say, you know, this is where I want to go in life? Uh, my brother and I, we weren't getting along. The, we had been, we'd made a second record, mm-hmm. which uh, we were having troubles uh, getting it out. Um, the label we'd been on was, it sort of run out of funds and we were, we were looking for a new label. Um, we had lost our drummer, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Bad so, stuff. Uh, yeah, it was <laughs> things. My brother wanted to move to Los Angeles. We were a New York band, and and uh, and that was it. Mm-hmm. He went, and 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 to me at that moment, it was just clear that I was going to dedicate myself to writing novels, and and that that was it. It wasn't. Uh, I don't even remember having a conversation with myself. It was just you know there was no psyching myself into it. Right. It's just been building, I guess for for a number of reasons but yeah starting a new band at that moment did not did not make sense to me oh yeah i mean there's a lot more freedom in uh moving to writing where like 
you know, if you don't get stuff done, you know, the buck stops with you and you just know that like everything is on you. It's a very solitary process versus a band. Like if the drummer doesn't learn the song and messes it up live, that's like, oh shoot. You know, like you, there's only so much you can do. You have to rely on other people versus writing. It's, it's all you, like, you know where the fault lies. For sure. For sure. And that, and that brings its, uh, there are, are benefits to working alone for sure. And, and collaboration on the other hand, probably has the highest level of payoff for all the difficulty right when it when it works there's probably nothing more beautiful or or feels better in a in a place that maybe a, a writing doesn't intend to go not that i can't sort of find myself in a in a uh, uh a state of mind that is <laughs> sort of otherworldly but it tends to happen when you're when you're collaborating you know so uh, in terms of, uh, you know, your influences, like, you know, who are the, the books that, you know, you, you know, grew up reading, really inspired you, made you want to become an author? Like, who are, who are your guys or girls? Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's definitely transitioned over time. But um, I would say in my, in my 20s, it was definitely writers like Saul Bellow and, and Philip Roth and Thomas Mann and... Um, Dostoevsky and just those kinds of people who are so in awe of uh, wanted to to make other people feel the way that these books made me feel wanted to figure it out at all cost. <laughs> How about yeah. yourself? Um, well, for me, I, so I'm uh, a little bit of a, a weird one where my my main taste in literature is like uh, Victorian age stuff. Uh, for mm-hmm. some reason that that sweet spot really works for me. I, I think it. it's the prose, mm-hmm. the way that sentences are constructed and flow where I read stuff from different eras and I maybe like the stories themselves better, but the mm-hmm. language used and the flow of sentences isn't my thing. So, but like uh, my, my favorite author in terms of uh, prose is actually probably Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Just the, okay. the way that man, you know, puts together a sentence, puts together a paragraph is perfection for me. Um, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Mark Twain, um, Charles Dickens. I know a lot of people shit on Dickens, but you know what? Like, man, he he was like the Steven Spielberg of his day. He's kind of hokey, but damn it, I love it. Um, favorite really? book is probably Wuthering Heights. So you know that that kind of stuff is more my sweet spot. I feel you. Love love Victorian literature for sure. But you know, in terms of um your your musical taste, I mean, so I've noticed, you know, I've been listening to your band, and I've noticed, you know, a lot of uh, Beatles isms. Who were the artists that you know inspired you musically that got you? You know, who who are those musical heroes? We talked about your book heroes. Who are the musical heroes? Oh yeah, um, it's yeah, certainly the Beatles, uh, the Kinks. At that point. I was listening to a lot of Elvis Costello and and the attractions, those records. Uh, that um, Fugazi was a big influence. Uh, Pavement. I mean, when I was uh, a teenager, those were the the shows we would go see. Um, Super Chunk. You know, it's sort of pop with uh, a bit of just aggression. I guess. <laughs> you know? No, I mean, we pop def- with aggression is is I think that's some uh, of the best music. Definitely wanted to be. We wanted to be Fugazi, but we wanted to write songs like the Beatles. So somewhere in between there, fell the. I mean, that's 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 a very reasonable goal to set in terms of uh, there 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 are worse directions for a band. I've been um <laughs> doing some uh, metal analysis on the YouTube channel, and uh, like I said, there are much worse uh, directions you could you could take a band. Absolutely. So I want to talk about uh, the the first book, uh, Balls, mm-hmm. uh, and sort of like your your inspirations for that, the process, and um, like getting it out there. Um, yeah. Like, you know, what was that journey like for you and really the, you know, inspiration behind that first book? It was definitely the hardest one. It was, I'd sort of set myself to this task of writing this book. Um, I had written a book that had not gotten any attention as far as uh, an agent or a publisher. And I just set off to write the next one. Um, so what and- was that book? Because I'm, I'm curious about that. Because I, I know the first book is often like the passion project. So what was yeah. that one? The first book was about this guy who finds these eight unknown unpublished Chekhov stories and he decides to plagiarize them and publish them under his own name. And uh, it wasn't very good. I mean, I, I definitely, I remember some of the struggles 
at that point um, were just constructing a sentence, you know? I mean, I just just trying to paint a scene and create characters and uh it was it was not very enjoyable i don't know why i did it uh, but but then the next one with balls it did become uh, i don't know also it's a really a, a struggle to figure out what i was trying to do um and i i think that was definitely the most growing pains as far as um i've just finished a a manuscript for for a new book and it would be my fourth book published and uh just certain issues that don't crop up anymore you know really sort of knowing who my characters are knowing perfectly open to getting lost but and and certainly figuring out what i mean to say and what it is i'm making and, and coming in somewhat blind but also um uh having having a sense of a better sense of why maybe I start, I would start to write one of these books and, and where they're going. Um, with balls, it was just, again, another sort of blind leap and really just trying to figure out how to write a book and, and sort of gaining the confidence to write a book. And, and I had learned from music how to go about getting something out there and, and the difficulty and also the sort of nuances of it and how, um, how not linear the process is between making something and getting it out and, and how, uh, how you just have to keep going, maintaining your own interest in your, in your work. Right. You know, um, keeping that momentum until the, the thing gets out. It's sort of, you know, the end yeah. goal is I have an album. I have these songs I want to write. I need to make sure Absolutely. we record them. Mix them, master them, whatever process we need to do, and then the album gets out. We get it with the label, gets printed, the album art, boom, it's done. With writing, I have to write this many pages, get it edited, you know, get the agent, get the agent to pitch it to the publishers, get the deal, get it out. It's, it's you know, you just you just are familiar with there's a bunch of steps in the process, and you know you just have to get it done. Absolutely, absolutely. And be patient about it, you know. Yeah, so you said it took six years. So were you were you working at the time uh, that you were writing the first book? Because I think I read um, uh, uh, in uh, an article you wrote where like you were working as a, a waiter and you gave a copy of the book to one of your heroes and as someone who has yeah. also worked in the service industry. Man, I feel you, brother. Um, <laughs> And I, you know, sort of like the difficulty, you know, as as an up and comer, which I know you relate to, is sort of that balance of uh, commitments in life, where uh, you know you're trying to get that time that you need to sit down and write. But also, you know, I saw the ring on your finger. You know, I too am married, so I know that that's uh, balancing the, you know, the the life at home with the lovely with the lovely spouse. Uh, plus getting that time to write and then like if you want to bother having friends at all and so how did you juggle all that while working <laughs> well one thing that uh, I definitely uh, got hooked on was writing very very early in the morning uh, I and it happened when I have a son who's nine and it happened around the time that he was born but I would just start waking up very early before anyone else was awake and this is this ensures that the writing gets you know gets done yeah, I did the uh, same thing. <laughs> I, you, so there you go. I mean, it doesn't resolve the the other angst that you carry around with yourself about the writing necessarily. That you're certainly um, confronted with. Uh, let's say I'm let's say I'm writing for a couple hours in the morning, and there's ten to twelve hours left in the day. I haven't. I might not be sitting there and, and working on the writing, but I'm still sort of grappling with <laughs> with what I've made or what I'm trying to figure out mm -hmm. um, or whether it's enough. But, you know, just sort of trusting in the fact that you're showing up and doing and tending to it, it right. is, uh, is just something to sort of trust in. in the, and again, that's sort of, you know, I played bass in the natural history of the band that I was in with my brother. And, and when I started playing the bass, I was I had never played the bass and I was terrible. It was terrible, and all I had was the fact that I was interested in figuring out how to play the bass. And so that's the story I, of every bassist. The story of every bassist, you're right. As our interview wrapped up, Julian told me a little bit about writing with his father. Robert, coming from a different generation of professional songwriters, was very accustomed to writing lyrics with another person. But for Julian, it allowed him to see an entirely new side of his father's personality he hadn't seen before. I describe the process of songwriting as taking a look into a part of someone's soul you wouldn't be able to see otherwise, and Julian agreed with my assessment. Julian Tepper is a man willing to share his story, 
whether it be through a podcast with me or his novels, and his story is certainly one worth sharing. If you're interested in reading any of his work, his books are available on Amazon and through all major retailers, though he hopes you can find and support a local independent bookstore when purchasing his work. His band, The Natural History, is also available on all major streaming services. Thank you for listening to The Greg Troyan Show. Please be sure to leave a review on your favorite podcast app and tell a friend about the show. Thank you so much, and have a great day.